So as you can tell from the title of this video, this is not going to be one of my standard beauty tutorials or lifestyle vlogs. This is going to be a very personal video and it's something that I never really discussed my nose job with you guys before, but now I've had a revision rhinoplasty, which is basically a second nose job, and I wanted to come on here and just be 100% open, upfront, honest, tell you guys everything about it. Um, I have pictures from like the day I had it done and everything, so today is actually my six week out from surgery thing, so it's still not like completely healed. It's still swollen and stuff, um, but I'll get into all of that in a minute. First, I just wanna say that I never really publicly like talk to you guys about the first nose job. The only thing I've ever said about it verbally that I can remember is in my confessions video, and I'm gonna put that clip in right here. The next thing I want to talk to you guys about is something that I think a lot of you already know because it's pretty obvious. I got a nose job and I got it back, um, I was 17 and it was honestly a really hard decision for my parents to make. I'd already been kind of supporting myself. I was moving to California by myself just with my sister without them. So my parents were at this state where technically I wasn't 18 so I didn't have the legal rights to make my own decisions but at the same time they kind of they went through a little bit of a parental struggle deciding whether it was the right thing to let me do it, but then they knew that if they didn't let me do it, I was just gonna end up resenting them and then I was gonna get it done when I turned 18 anyways. So it was really, I just wanna let you guys know that this was probably a really hard decision for my parents to make and I, I kind of regret it and I regret making my parents go through what they had to go through to kind of decide that because I don't know, it just wasn't very nice of me, but it was something I really wanted to do and I think at the beginning I was going to film like an entire experience video about it and I was going to film like the before and afters and all that stuff and then when I got it done I have to be honest the results weren't exactly what I thought they were going to be and I regretted it a little bit and I thought that maybe if I didn't talk about it maybe it would just go away. But I do like my nose better now that I have had it done but at the same time I'm still not 100% pleased with it and um, it's just one of those things where kind of I think maybe if I had waited till I was a little older I could have gone to a different doctor or maybe it's just my nose maybe my face suited my other nose better like I don't know but um, I did get my nose done and it was something that I I regret it and that's why I kind of haven't talked to you guys about it so as you can see I really regretted it and it was something that I felt like if I didn't talk about it, it almost didn't happen, which I know is a horrible way to like face your problems and things that are bothering you and what you're going through, but it was just a way for me to kind of be like, there's nothing you can do about it now, you can't change it now, and you gotta live with your decision. And so over the past six years, I've had a lot of issues with it. And so it was hard for me to kind of think about doing it again because I regretted it the first time so much. And it was also difficult for me to talk to my mom about it because she had so much guilt because it turned out to be kind of a botched procedure that she felt like she had allowed me to do it because I was only 17 when I had the first one done. And so I never wanted to bring it up to her how unhappy I was with it and how it was affecting my day-to-day -day life because she already felt like she had made the wrong decision and it it wasn't that way at all in my mind. Um, so for the past six years, I've kind of been living with this and then finally it was actually speaking to my little sister that made me decide that I was gonna do it because I told her, I was like, I get told that I'm a role model from a lot of different people online and people's moms will come up to me and be like, my daughter watches your videos, you're such a good role model to her. So for me, it was something that I didn't want to sit here and be like, oh, I'm endorsing plastic surgery or anything like that. And so I was talking to my little sister about it and I was like, you know, you know that this has been something that's been bothering me for six years and I think I want to get it redone, but I'm told I'm a role model from all these different people, but it's not as tangible as being told that I'm your role model because I know you, I know how I impact your life and your decisions and I know that you look up to me and I don't want you one day to wake up and look in the mirror and be like oh I don't like my nose well I can just get that fixed like it's so easy Blair's done it twice like no big deal so I was talking to her about it and it was actually at Elle's wedding and 
during the wedding, we were up in Santa Barbara during like the Santa Barbara fires and I had such a horrible sinus infection that I just was not enjoying the wedding at all. And so I was talking to her about all of this stuff and she was like, if it's something you can fix, why wouldn't you? And it kind of took me a little while to answer her. I was like, well, because of like all the reasons I just told you. And she was like, you doing something to your body is not me doing something to my body or telling me that I should or want to do something. She was like, I love myself. And I was like, that's why I love you, Jelly Bean, because you just put things in perspective. So I really, I know that this is like a rambly video and I'm gonna go on and tell you guys like everything. Um, but I really just wanted to say that like, I'm not doing this video to tell you guys like, oh, if you don't like your nose, like it's so easy, just go get it done. Or if there's something you don't like about yourself, like plastic surgery is the answer. That is not what I'm saying at all. And that's why I've put this off for so many years because I was so scared that that would be how it was perceived. When I had my first nose job done, I noticed complications afterwards right away. And it was super, super swollen, super upturned and pig-like. And you guys can go back and look at photos of like right when I got it done and when I started filming videos again, it looked so different than it did, you know, afterwards. But it was always something wasn't quite right. I wasn't breathing the same. Um, I wasn't sleeping the same. I had become a mouth breather, so I was sleeping with my mouth open every night, which ends up giving you like dry throat and it actually like itches and hurts really badly. Um, and it's like kind of embarrassing when you're sleeping in a room like with someone else and you're just over there like, <sighs> but um, yeah, I was a mouth breather for like six years. So it's really strange now that I have like such great breathing through my nose that I'm not gonna sit here and say it was all medical. There were definitely some cosmetic things that I wanted to change that I didn't like about my nose. So I'm not gonna sit here and be like, I had to get it fixed because it was, you know, all internal, but it was the majority of it was an internal reconstruction for the outside. All that I told him that I wanted to change is this side of my nose had actually collapsed. So I said, the only thing that I want to be different when you look at my nose, I loved my profile, like I was good with everything. I was like, the only thing is I wish it was like straight on my face because this side was straight down, but this side had like a curve in it. So it was really hard. I could, I kind of would like contour this side to almost make it look like this side had collapsed also. Um, but that was one of the reasons I was having breathing issues on top of some other things that I'll go into. Um, but it was just looks wise when i looked at the mirror i just wanted it to be a little more symmetrical like a little straighter and i said you know looks wise that's what i'm looking for other than that i loved it i think my profile is still like pretty much the same and it's not completely healed it's still kind of like upturned because you're swollen for up to a year before you see the full results from rhinoplasty and i can totally say i know that because from the last one, I thought I was healed like two months out and then I look and like months and months after my nose was still changing. So this might not even be like what it looks like in a couple months, but this is what it looks like right now. Something that the original doctor did in the first nose job that we didn't really know he was gonna do and we wouldn't have said it was okay for him to do had we known um, was, I don't know if you guys know what your turbinates are in your nose. I had no idea what they were, but it's basically your body's natural humidifier and kind of a filter almost to your sinuses and he removed mine we don't know if it's because he thought that it would like change the shape of the nose apparently it's a very like 80s way to do rhinoplasties but doctors don't really do that anymore you actually need your turbinates and there's not a way to ever get them back there's not an fda approved like device you can put in there to recreate what a turbinate does but basically um, your turbinates are the natural humidifier, like I said, so it keeps your nose moist and kind of keeps everything moving and grooving and stuff like that. But it also acts as a filter to the entrance to your sinus cavities. So since I didn't have that, everything I would breathe in, all of the dust and the soot and the dirt and the pollution and just anything that I would breathe in would get collected into my sinus cavities and I would have raging sinus infections probably at least once a month I would say and it would get really bad I mean it was giving me migraines on my head I don't know if you guys remember um, but I had a 
crazy sinus infection that actually was pushing on my brain and caused me to go to the hospital. I was in New York um, for Fashion Week years ago. Like there were just so many things and I just never really put two and two together until a doctor told me. He was like, so you're, you don't have turbinates. And I was like, okay, I don't know what a turbinate is, but okay, like, why don't I have them? He's like, well, it's from a surg, like they have to be surgically removed. And you know, so we kind of put two and two together that the doctor had removed those and we didn't understand exactly why, because there's nothing that you can do. We've done all the research, asked all the doctors that I could of, is there something that's like approved that I can put in there? It's like basically like a fake turbinate, you know? And they said, no, that there isn't anything right now, but there were different ways that we could reconstruct my nose and make it better for me to breathe. And the more air that I could get through, the more that it would just kind of help. He also gave me a lot of recommendations that I had heard from doctors before. Like I sleep with a humidifier on every single night, but he told me to maybe invest in the Dyson one. It's a little more pricey, actually it's a lot more pricey than your standard humidifier. But I just gotta say, if anyone knows like how good humidifiers can be, you know nothing until you have tried the Dyson one. I just wanna say I, I'm like so happy with it and it looks really cool on my nightstand because it's all like futuristic but um there are lots of little things that I can do to kind of help it, but I really needed the reconstructive surgery to open up both of my nasal passages. Basically, they said that I got such little air through my nose that if someone like jokingly or actually taped over my mouth, like if they were kidnapping me and they taped over my mouth or if like a friend thought it was funny to like put tape over my mouth, I don't know, that would be weird, but you never know. Um, they were like, you would actually die very quickly from that because you get such little oxygen into your nose. And I have to say, since getting this surgery, I've had a lot more energy and I don't know if that's just because I was like on bed rest for a little while right after surgery, obviously. So I didn't like do much. And so now that I'm like doing a lot again, I just feel like I'm very productive or if I actually just have more energy. And I was talking to my dad about it and he was like, your brain's probably getting more oxygen. And I was like, Oh, okay, that makes sense. Um, but we had to completely reconstruct my nose with cartilage that I didn't have. The previous doctor had removed way too much cartilage. I pretty much, the tip of my nose, I'm not gonna do it now because it's just like hard as a rock, but the tip of my nose, I could push all the way down to my upper lip or push it on either side of my face. There wasn't any sort of structure. It was literally just like, from where you have the bridge of your nose, this is a bone. And then if you feel, you'll feel like kind of around this area where the cartilage starts. And that is where it pretty much, I almost didn't have anything there. Like I could said, I could like completely move it around my face. And he was like, this is really not normal. And I'm like, I didn't think so, but like, you know, I'm also terrified to do this again and have even worse results. So, um, we needed to have something to reconstruct. He said that you can take cartilage from your ear or your rib, but because he needed so much to reconstruct my nose and that he was actually gonna make it wider, I don't know if you guys noticed the bridge here is actually wider than it was previously, but I was fine with that. I was like, whatever you need to do, if it needs to get bigger, my nose gets bigger, like give me that schnoggin. He was like, I wanna go in through your ribs and get a good chunk of cartilage. Um, and then he said, I'm gonna need to go in to get tissue to lay over on top of it. So I'm going to go into your scalp and cut a section of tissue and put that on top of it. Um, turns out when I was actually in the surgery, he went in and I have the ribs of a 60 year old. Basically, he described it as my ribs have already turned to brittle bone similar to like osteoporosis he couldn't get I didn't have cartilage on rib eight or nine which is like where he went in and so he went in on eight and then went up to nine or went in on nine went to eight whatever and was checking and he was like we don't know why that is it could be something as simple as calcium deficiency like but basically you have the ribs of a 60 year old with osteoporosis and like we couldn't get cartilage from that. So he had this special tool. And like I said, I was willing to go anywhere to find the best surgeon, I swear I did. And he had this special tool. He actually carved across my rib bone with this little tool. He carved up sections of actual bone to reconstruct this bridge bone part of my nose. And then for the cartilage, he basically cut my ear off and 
took cartilage out and re-sewed it on all the way behind my ear, all the way back here. I have um, stitches that were stitching my entire ear basically back on to my head. Um, and then he ended up having to, on the top of my lip underneath, like above my teeth. So like if you take your tongue and rub them over your teeth, like right there, um, I have stitches there that were actually holding my nose back down where it's supposed to be, which is really scary to think about. Um, and those are still there six weeks later. I still have those. Um, and it's just been a really long journey. Um, it turned out to be, it was supposed to be like maybe a four or five hour procedure. I went in at, my surgery time was one o'clock. I got there at 12.30, went into the surgery room at one, came out of surgery around 7.30 and didn't come home till like 9.30. So I was like waking up in the room and stuff like that. And it takes forever for them to like make sure you're okay and that you can go home and stuff. I had a giant teddy bear waiting for me from my boyfriend, which was like the sweetest thing ever. It was this massive teddy bear that he found at Costco and it is seriously the cutest thing ever. Um, so it was, I don't even know where I'm going in this video. I feel like I've rambled for a really long time and I haven't even like told you guys like a quarter of the story. My mom flew out to take care of me for the first like 10 days. Um, and it was supposed to only be the first like six or seven days. And then I ended up like passing out on the morning of her flight. And so she changed her flight and stayed a few more days because she was like, you're not ready to like be on your own yet. And also just little things like she was obviously bringing me food and keeping up with like my medicine and stuff. Cause I was totally out of it. He had me on so many things because I had so many different incision points and I had, um, like, so I had staples in my head from where he took the you know, like tissue from my scalp. I had stitches all the way back around my entire ear, stitching that back on. I had stitches above my lip. I had all the stuff that had happened with my nose with a cast over it. I had my rib incision with the drain coming out of it. The morning of my surgery, obviously I wasn't allowed to eat and my surgery wasn't until one o'clock. So it was um, one of those mornings that all I wanted was like coffee and I wanted to have breakfast with my mom and I was so anxious and nervous about everything. But I slept in as long as I could, which ended up being I think till like 6 a.m. And then I got up and we went over to Elle's house. We hung out with her for a little while and then we went on to the surgery center. I took my last like full shower and really scrubbed everything down with like antibacterial soap that they told me like all over my ribs and just your whole body, you need to do that. Um, I washed my hair like by myself for the last time in like the next two weeks. Um, and I had my PJs on. I went in in like anthropology sweatpants and just like a zip up sweater and went in got in the bed, they were incredible with the IV and everything like that because I have had some pretty traumatic IV experiences when I was in the hospital, when I was in sixth grade, I had E. coli. And I think I've talked to you guys about this, like how bad the IVs were, but they basically used up pretty much every vein that they could. Um, my veins just like weren't, I was such like just a little person. I was only in sixth grade. And so I've had some bad experiences where they've like just been poking around and like moving the needle, trying to like find a vein. And um, they were so good. They got it first try. And that's like a big deal to me because most of the time that doesn't happen because I have veins that roll. So whenever I go in to get blood drawn, I'm always like, they roll, they roll. And they're like, okay. And then they stick it in and they're like, oh, sorry, we missed. We have to do it again. And I'm like, Okay, but these people, they got the IV in the very first time, which I was very excited about. So um, I'm in the bed and then the anesthesiologist came by. He talked to me for a little while. And then um, the last thing I remember was he talked to me and the plastic surgeon obviously came by and was talking to me and we went back over everything. And I had met with him so many times before the surgery because like I said, I wanted to really find like the best person. So I did multiple consultations with doctors. I was willing to go to New York, Beverly Hills, San Francisco, like anywhere that I needed to go to get this best doctor. And so he's in Southern California. And so that was actually really easy because I was able just to drive there day of and come home. Uh, but I had had multiple meetings with him. We went back over everything that was gonna happen. And then he said, I'll see you in, you know, afterwards and then, 
the anesthesiologist then came over, we did our whole spiel, and then he said, you know, I'm gonna give you some medicine that's gonna relax you, you can count down from 100, and then they started like rolling me back, and I remember trying to like make it last as long as possible because I was like, okay, 100, 99, 98, and I like wanted to see how far I could get. I think I got to like 96 or something, and then I woke up, and they were like, hi, like, everything went well and I apparently told him it was really painful and they were like well we already gave you like more medicine and I was like oh because they were like you've woken up like four times already and said it hurt really bad and I was like oh well it does and they were like okay we'll see what we can do and then I asked if my mom was there and they were like of course she's in the waiting room do you want her to come back and then Jacob was there also so he came back and um so both of them were back there with me and my mom brought me a big fuzzy bathrobe and it says on the back it says this girl needs sleep which I or this girl loves sleep or something which I thought was really cute and that was a little present for me um and she brought, brought me the fuzzy bathrobe and put me in that and then I just like hung out in the bed for a little while and then they drove me home Jacob drove and um I had like a neck pillow on to make sure that I wasn't like thrashing around in the car and I came home and Ellen Alex came over to see me and apparently I was like totally 100% like lucid appearing like I don't really remember it that much but like I was up I was having conversations with them I was eating applesauce I was like up and around I was like with my dogs and so then I went to sleep and then I don't really think I woke up for like four days. So most of the time when you get a rhinoplasty, you are allowed to like sit in a bathtub and wash your body and everything. And then you can lean your head back and wash your hair as long as you don't get your cast wet because that has to stay on for at least a week. Um, for me though, because I had the rib incision and I had a drain in my rib, they said that like I wasn't allowed to do that because I couldn't get that area wet. I couldn't get my ear wet. I couldn't get my nose wet. So I had to tape saran wrap like all the way around my ear and then lay back on the kitchen counter and my mom used like the sink little faucet thing to wash my hair for me. I definitely watched pretty much every nose job vlog that I could find leading up to this and recovery vlogs and everything. So I got a wedge pillow from Bed Bath & Beyond and that really helped. So I slept on that because you have to sleep elevated. And then I put my own pillow and then I slept with a neck pillow so that my head wouldn't like fall to the side and I don't know I was scared my nose would like slide off my face or something um, I was already used to being a mouth breather so it was super easy for me to adjust to breathing through my mouth when I slept I know a lot of people in the vlogs were like the hardest part is that I can't breathe through my nose and I'm like oh that's easy for me um, and then having a really good humidifier was like life-changing so in the past six weeks I have noticed so many differences like I can feel that there's like a structure up the center of my nose, which I guess is like what most normal people feel. But I can feel like air when I breathe in, like especially if it's cool air, I can feel it going up each side of like the bridge of my nose. Like I can feel it individually. Before it just felt like what I did get was just kind of like, you know how you have two eyes, but you see one together? It was kind of like that. Like I had two nostrils, but I breathed like just in one, it felt like. Now I can actually like feel the air on each side, like going in and touching like each side of everything. It's the weirdest feeling. I also told my doctor, I was like, I don't know if this is normal, but I think something's wrong with me. And he was like, oh my goodness, what? And I was like, well, I have a lot of extra saliva. So he said that most people sleep with their mouth closed and as they're breathing in the middle of their night, through their nose, they're, you know, they have their turbinates, which are their own humidifiers and everything, and everything stays kind of like just oiled up and lubed up in your body. Like it's the natural body just does that. Because I didn't have that luxury, I was breathing through my mouth, so I constantly had a super dry throat. And he said, now that I'm sleeping with my mouth closed, which took a while for me to get used to, but my mom has said that she came in in the middle of the night one night after I got my cast taken off and she said my mouth was closed when I was sleeping and I was like, I don't believe you. Um, but I can like, there's a difference. Like I have like more like spit, it's really weird, but it's a really like cool feeling. 
feeling, I guess. It's like almost like I swallowed like a little bit of olive oil or something. Like everything's just so like, like easy and just like blowy, which is like really weird. Um, the only complication I had after surgery was with my rib. So what happened is obviously I had the rib complication in the surgery. And he also said the first hour of surgery he spent, he was taking out 22 permanent stitches along the inside of my nose that the other doctor had left in there, which apparently is not like common practice to do. And there was no reason that he needed to do that. So that was something else that was irritating, like my nose and my sinus area. I had 22 foreign objects in my face, basically. Um, so he spent the first like hour, he was like, I was just like cleaning everything up and figuring out what the heck was going on. And then I had the complication, obviously, when he went into my rib and saw that I didn't have cartilage on my rib, which is like very odd, especially for someone my age. So I actually have to go in and get tests to like make sure everything's okay. But he was like, it's probably nothing. Um, and then, the only complication I had afterwards was I got my drain taken out of my rib incision and they said, you know, you can't like work out or lift anything heavy for four weeks, really just take it easy. But I had already been on bed rest for a week and I was kind of like just over it and I just wanted to do stuff. And I went to Lowe's and I bought a hammock that was really heavy and I was like carrying it inside. And then I like hung a really heavy mirror. Like I was just doing things around the house that I really wasn't supposed to. And I thought that it wasn't gonna do anything the worst thing that could happen is it would just take me a little longer to heal but I was like I'd rather be productive and get things done and maybe have like the pain of having two broken ribs basically for a little longer than a month than just sit here and not get anything done and then not be in pain like it that sounds weird but I was okay with it uh turns out that's not why they tell you that it's not just for pain it's actually because your incision will start collecting more fluid, but since he already took the drain out, there wasn't anywhere for that fluid to go and it can become septic and infected. And so you have to get that fluid out of there. So I started having, it was like, I said I had like a boob and then I had like a bubble right under my boob, like where the um, incision was just like basically filling up. Like it was an actual like bubble of fluid and when you touched it it was like a waterbed almost like my skin rippled like a waterbed I swear it was the grossest thing ever but um I you know told and it was hurting really badly so I told him about it and he was like you need to come in and so I was like okay so I go in and I'm thinking he's just gonna like scold me and tell me what I did was bad no he gets out a big old syringe with a needle on it and says I have to stick this in here and drain all the fluid out and I'm not very good with needles, so that was a wake up call. Now I'm six weeks out today. I feel absolutely amazing. I know that it's gonna be shifting. I can even see it day to day as I wake up, like depending on how I've been sleeping, the swelling kind of like shifts a little bit. So I don't know exactly what it's gonna look like at the end, but he said the first four to six weeks, you see the most dramatic change. So, you know, it's not gonna get too much different than this. He said it will drop a little bit, it won't be so upturned because that was one thing I was like, I don't want to miss picky nose because I felt like I had that the first time around for like a year. And so I said, I didn't want that. And he said that that's definitely going to drop down. That's just like so swollen and tight right now. Um, and then other than that, he said the bridge will become more defined right now. It's just kind of a layer of like swelling over everything. But once all of that subsides, there will be like an actual defined bridge of my nose. And then um, I shouldn't have, you know, the collapsed nose. I'm able to breathe a lot better. And I just wanted to do this video to like tell you guys everything that was going on and where I've been. I know I've still been uploading videos, but those were actually pre-filmed before I got the surgery. And so this is what's been going on. I've taken like so many snaps that I was like, oh, I can't put that on yet. Cause what if people are like, why is your nose different all of a sudden? And I haven't told you yet. And then I didn't want you to think that I only told you because you figured it out, but it's not really like you wouldn't not figure out cause it's like in the middle of my face. But um, this was a very long video. And if you are still watching, I think that's pretty cool because this was a very long video, but I feel like everything needed to be said. And if you're still hanging out and watching, then hey, I love you because that was a lot to watch. Um, but now I'm gonna go ahead and go, but I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know it wasn't like my typical video. It was more of just like a sit down, talk to you guys style video, which I haven't done in a really long time. Um, but I kind of like it. Like, I feel like I have a lot more to say to you guys. So maybe this should be like a 
more common thing. Like I sit down and update you guys on everything that's going on. I don't know. But next up is my home tour series, which I'm really, really excited about. So make sure you are subscribed if you want to see that. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll talk to you later. Bye.